be fruitful is to produce a product because there is a seed in you it's very dangerous to associate or marry a person who can't bring anything to the table because when you start to lose things it shall not help you to fight the battle whenever god gives an instructions he does not give it a blind eye the holy spirit moves around and searches into your homes he searches into your hearts to see that you have done the right thing you are a child of god you are a child of anointing you are set apart to destroy and to uproot every power that may come along your way and the lord is telling me he wants to carry you as i lay my hands on you something powerful is about to unlock in your life and is about to wipe away your tears you are afraid as you are seated there because you are thinking you are about to lose something very precious and god is saying you shall lose nothing jesus i see something emerges which is not correct and it brings a terminal disease on you and your life is shortened don't be afraid don't be afraid i now counsel every plans of the enemy whatever the enemy has concocted against you i counsel it by the anointing holy ghost friend bishop alex once again it is always a joy for me to reach you on this mode i'm here to let you know that the word of god is so powerful the bible says it is sharper than any to edge this word dividing us under the soul and the spirit and the bone and the marrow i need you to know that today we have a word for you and your life will never be the same prepare your pen and paper so that you may take some of the notes that will be coming and please don't forget to take our numbers at the end of the program because you may need to call me and I may need to talk to you. Join us in our life service now. God bless you. So you produce, you multiply. Listen to me. Poverty is not the absence of resources, it's the absence of initiative. Too many people are too lazy and too many people are job-minded. From savings, I need a job, I'm not working. Ask yourself, what can I do beside working? What can I do? There are many people who are not working, but they are working. Jesus. The thing is inside of you. You need to use it. Take it out. And you're going to enjoy your life. You never came on this earth to escort other people. You are on this earth to make it. Shout power. Now, God created everything and hid them somewhere. It would take someone to have a gift and a desire to pull it out. When he brought minerals, he hid them in the soil. You are quiet. When God wanted to bring wood like this, he hid it in a tree. When God wanted to, you to produce a chair like this, he hid it in the tree. 
He will need to go to a tree and pull a table out of it. If you are seated, you don't know how to pull things out. You are going to have a long way, my friend, on this earth. You're going to think like Bakutakati or Bakuloil. And yet no one has bewitched you. You just need to become more initiative. You need to do what you have never done. Somebody shout hallelujah. So, here is the thing. Apart from producing a fruit, multiplication, you need now to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that you need to replenish. Replenish means you must distribute your idea. Make yourself known. In the times we are living on Facebook, I enjoy some of you sell products and you throw them on Facebook and you, are, you have got a blog, a page or whatever and you are letting everyone know of what is happening. That is what we call replenishing. There are people with ideas, people with products which are locked in a bag. Hey, do you know what you say? I'm a business. Then they start to open the bag. Hidden inside the bag. How are we going to see the shoe in the bag? Our eyes cannot see through the bag. Learn to replenish. Your gift, learn to replenish. You are a musician. Don't be afraid. Get on Facebook, Twitter. Open a page for yourself. Let people know who you are. There are many people who know me worldwide because of Facebook. I, I play with that thing seriously. I dominate on that thing. I, there is no day I didn't put anything. That matter where I am, I, and I know what to put. Hello. First of all, people know I've got a strong marriage. Because I want them to trust me. Are you understanding? Number two, they know I'm a smart man. Are you understanding? So because of that, they will definitely desire to meet me or to have me. I've preached in places where people never knew about me, but they have just been following me on Facebook. I'll speak one, two, three words and that's it. And they'll call me, come to Dubai and preach. And I'll be going to meet a total stranger who I don't know. Why? Because I've decided to replenish my gift. You can never be local. You're going to die in a corner. I pray the Lord shall pull that thing out of you. Some of you are singers in this place. Start writing the worship team. Start to sharpen your voice. You don't know where God is taking you. You can't sit like that without doing anything for God. It's in the house of God where you discover who you are. Most of these people who sing today, they sang in church. They discovered this thing in church. So, it's very important for you to understand. You must now do what? Replenish yourself. So, if you're going to put a picture on Facebook and you say you are baking, you are not going to wear a jazz. A jazz. Jerez. It's holding you here. You are feeling cold. They are going to doubt the oven you are using. <laughs> How are you feeling so cold? And you put and you say, order, order. In no. You put on your proper uniform. A mechanic in a two-piece, I won't trust him. If you come in a two-piece, you want to repair my car, I won't trust you. But if another boy come with a very big wall here, the knee is outside. Unema oil or so. Even if this, this boy is a, is a smoking guy, I'm not going to mind about the smoke. I can trust him. His appearance is telling me this boy and that's how sometimes we fail to replenish ourselves because our presentation and the products are not corresponding that's a problem no I've got a saloon these are the hairs we are doing but yourself your head doesn't have one piece of hair that will convince us. Come for the lashes. We must first see yours. Let your product correspond. That's how you replenish. But Christians, they don't care. They don't care. No, I'm selling this kind of clothes. Let's see your style. Savan. You cannot sell what yourself don't have trust in. You can, if you say you do hair, but you have no confidence in doing your own, how can you do mine? Business.
business people, you don't need lazy people around you. Who gonna tell you, go and find a job? You need a business person who tell you, I've gone through these challenges, you can overcome them. Good morning, Daddy and Mommy. Good morning, family in Christ. For those who don't know me, my name is Maria Santayo. The one morning, Monday morning, I was driving to work and I was, my heart was very heavy. And I'm talking to God and I'm saying to God, God, are you still listening to me? Are you still there? Um, I can't hear you. Is there anything I'm doing that's making me not hear you? Please talk to me. Then I went to the office and I needed to send someone a message and I decided to go to Facebook to inbox and then I saw that he was online. Towards the, the end, God answered me through daddy. Everything I was asking. Maria, the Lord has just opened my eyes and I'm speaking to you right now, my daughter. Let not your heart be heavy. Let not your heart be troubled. God is telling me to tell you right now that if he's able to take care of the beds of the air, what more? of his own children that love him. Whatever may be worrying you right now and putting a lot of thoughts in your mind, God says, I'll take care of everything for I love you and I care about you. Maria, that's what the Spirit of the Lord is saying right now. You have nothing to worry, but you need to look up to the Lord and the Lord says, I've arranged your life. I've arranged, I've put everything in place and he says, I shall not put you to shame. Two weeks ago, happiness was testifying and collecting offering. And I was, I've been retrenched. And I hadn't been paid for a month. It was going on two months. And then on that Friday, I received a third of what I was supposed to get. And I, with so many things in my mind, I forgot I need to pay my tithes. By the way, I'm, I used to go to other churches and I paid tithes whenever I wanted. But when I came to this church, I decided I'm going to pay my tithes. Whether it's difficult, I'm just going to do it. So happiness is talking. And while she's talking, I remember, sure, I did get money on Friday, so I need to pay my tithes. But then Satan, being, <laughs> being Satan, put this long list in my mind of, if you can't, you haven't got a job, and you need to do one, two, three. And I just decided, God, I'm not going to steal from you. And I went to the front, and I paid my tithes. This was Sunday. Monday morning, I started my vehicle. And as, as I turned the key, it made such a noise, it felt like the engine was going to fall. So I went to Daddy, and I'm trying to stay very calm because... <laughs> I'm calm here, but my mind is saying, girl, you need to lose it because it's crazy. <laughs> and I said to daddy, is this normal? And he just looked at me and being the daddy, is, he just stayed very calm and said to me, Maria, stay calm. When you go home, I want you to turn the key and you will hear no noise. So after the training, I went home and I sat in the garage and I had found a friend, my husband's late friend as a mechanic, to come and look at the vehicle. So I sat in a garage, I didn't even go inside, and I phoned him. And I said to him, Vainant, did you look at the car? He said, yes, my, it was, didn't your son tell you? I said, no, I'm still in a garage. And he said, there's no noise. It was only a part that fell that was hitting the fan belt as I turned. So that was just Satan putting fear. So you need to understand that the gift in you must not die. God has put it in you as a weapon. I meet young people who say God has called me. You are not using your calling. When God called us at the age of 17, all we did was to walk from one house to another with our old pastors who have gone ahead of us, carrying their Bible, learning what they were doing. The first time I buried a dead person, I was not a pastor. Because people used to see me with pastors 
And one time we had the graveyard and the pastor never came. Then somebody looked and said, ah. Because I was always moving with my pastor carrying a big Bible as a small boy. Hey, I was shaking. They say, no, please, you're going to do a burial. I say, hey, I've never done. And I'm not a pastor. I'm in the youth. I'm a youth leader. First time I buried a person. Then I stood and I said, my pastor, when he's burying, this is what he said. I remembered what he used to say. I stood there. So yes, with the authority given to me by the church and this state. Because that's what my pastor was saying. I now commit this body to the grave, soil to soil, ashes to ashes. The spirit goes back to the father. And my shirt was outside, small boy. You know why? I understood my calling and I put my calling next to a person who was complimenting what was inside of me. If you're a business person, you don't need these less people around you. They wear you out. Business people, you don't need lazy people around you. Who gonna tell you, go and find a job? You need a business person who will tell you, I've gone through these challenges, you can overcome them. Everything will be all right. That's why your gift must, must be subjected to the person who understands it. If you're in this church and you say you are called, you're supposed to be in church every day. You see what I'm doing. Sometimes when sick people come here, I'll tell you, pray for them. Then we are doing what? We are making the gift inside of you to be resuscitated. You can't say you are called by God. And yet what you are doing is contrary. Your gift must be near to the people who understand or who are doing what is similar to yours. This is the reason why I'm going to tell you the truth. If you're in business, find business people and business people who are right in the mind. This is what I said to people. This is the principle I have. If you have no car, even if you're a driver, unless you have owned a car before, I can't borrow you my car. Because you don't know the pain of owning a car. You don't know the pain of buying tires. You are going to mess it up and you're going to bring it in tatters. So, we must be fruitful. We must uh, multiply. We must replenish. Then, after that, we need to subdue. How do you subdue in your gifting? This is where there is a law. This is where there is a very serious call. Subduing means you must dominate. You must control the market. Don't compete with anybody. You must dominate. You must do things that are going to be above what people are doing. It means you need to beat their offer. You need to dominate. If I'm going to employ you, I'm going to take care of my employers more than you do. If we're going to do the same kind of a project, I'll make sure that it is done in an excellent way. Listen to me. Gift demands not you to look for money. Gift demands for you to fulfill your dream. Because it's your dream. It's not about money. It's your dream that is gifted. And when you start to fulfill your dream, money become natural. Money become automatic. And I need you to understand me. The challenge that we have today, people are not prepared to be trained. The first thing they ask is that, how much? Get trained. Let us sharpen your gift in you. That's why I me, mean, I don't get a pastor from the word go and we start talking salary. No, I want to sharpen what is in you. First, for free, you must be do it for free. Your salary is God's blessing. After it is sharpened, it starts to speak on its own. I hear what I'm saying? It starts to do what? To speak on its own. Because we have sharpened your gift. Then we start to release some responsibility in you. That's how come some of the sons, when we release them, we see them now when they have got birthdays, they'll come with some serious suits they have given to them. They have bought them suits and shoes. They have given money. Papa, I've come. No, the church gave me this much. Because now I've sharpened the gift. The gift I've started to speak for them. The problem is that you rush. You are in a hurry. Sharpen your gift. Somebody say sharpen your gift. 
Each one of us, God has put something in us. You that are selling, you need to dominate the market. How do you dominate it? Make sure whatever you bring forth, it must be something that's going to appeal to the people. But a lot of you, you do wrong things expecting right results. You can't. And I'm telling you something. A lot of people attending seminars. No, come for this seminar. Come for the business meeting. Come. You can attend or I care. If the gift is not in you, it's not going to work. You're wasting money, donating money for nothing. Some of you are not entrepreneurs. You are barbers. Hair cutters. Some of you here you are in confectionery shops. So if somebody is going to have a seminar, it must be about baking. Don't just teach me about principles to manage money. Which money? Can you manage what you don't have? No, come and learn the management of money. Come and learn the marketing. You have no product, then even if I teach you marketing, what are you going to market? And people are flooding and they sit. No, I'm against that. You know why I'm against that? Until you discover your gift. Until you know what you carry. You see, like me, if, because I know my gift, and if I'm going to any business seminar, I'm going to take the business principles and put them to the gift that I have. But if you don't know your gift, you don't qualify for any seminar. You qualify for prayer. <laughs> you have no product to sell, but you're going into business. The question is that, what is your gift? What is it you want to sell? Very few people know what you want to do. Now, listen to me. God has gifted us differently. Discover Some of you are not supposed to work. You are supposed to use your gift of business and make money and survive. Wow, wow. This is the only time we have for us to do what we have done. We wish we could have enough time to bring the word and explain and say all we want to say. But whatever the case is, I want you to know that whatever you have received today, and if you are looking for any help from us, spiritually or whatsoever, you can contact us on the numbers appearing on the screen. There are some of you that say, this word has just touched me. I want to talk to Bishop Alex. I want you to know I'm waiting for you. Somebody also is waiting to pray for you from our office. Call the numbers appearing on the screen and we'll be happy to walk with you on this journey. We are here for you. However, for those people that do not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, if you know you are ready to receive him right now, close your eyes and pray after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive my sins. Cleanse me by the precious blood of Jesus. Write my name in the book of life. From today, I'm a new creation. Thank you, Jesus, for receiving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just pray that prayer, congratulations. Join any full gospel preaching church. Alternatively, you can come and fellowship with us in Mbombela or any of our branches around South Africa. God bless you. Shalom. To all our viewers at home, thank you for tuning in. If you'd like a copy of the sermon or you'd like to fellowship with us, please find us at number 12 Samora Marshall Street in the city of Mbombela. For more information, please use the numbers on the screen and please tune in again next week.